Hello. Just waiting for my guest, Christina, to come on. All right, here comes Christina. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. Good, how are you? All right, so we are live. And we are here to talk about celebrity estates with Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> so thanks for joining, Christina. Yes, thank you so sure. much for having me. So do you want to give us the background on Abraham Lincoln this time? Sure. So I have a little bit of background on him. So as most of us know, he was an attorney himself. Um, and he was assassinated. And he was married, and he had, I believe it was two children. And when he passed away, he did not have a will. Even though he was an attorney, he, like most of us, think that, oh, nothing's going to happen to me, or I have time to plan. And um, he passed away without a will. Don't know if you want to add yeah, I mean, that. I think that's the basic stuff we, you know, all want to emphasize is it doesn't matter how old you are. Um, you know, estate planning starts when you're 18 and you are an autonomous individual and have the only, are the only one that can make decisions for yourself. Um, so, yeah. Um, and then what we do know is that um, his, one of his good friends, I forget the name of the judge, was a judge. Do you remember the name? Yeah, he was, a, I don't remember his name, but he was a Supreme Court justice. And so that's what really makes this interesting is because the outcome really only happened because a good friend of his was the Supreme Court justice. So he was able to make things happen that, you know, us lay folks would never be able to make happen. And especially now in today's day and age, things are much different back then. Um, his estate went on to where it was split equally amongst his wife and his children. You know, here in New York, when you pass away without a will, the laws, it's called the laws of intestacy, apply. And basically, New York law dictates who gets what percentage and what amount of your estate. Um, you know, so if you die without a will in New York and you're married, your spouse gets the first 50000 and then half, and your children split the other half, um, which was not the case with Abe Lincoln. It, you know, was divided equally among the three of them. So his children got a lot more than they would have gotten. And so that was in, I think uh, that was in Chicago. Yeah, so change. Chicago might have different intestate laws or they were still developing the laws because laws do change. Even in New York, that law has changed. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, we're dealing with a probate from a guy who died in 1992 and the wife only gets a third, whereas, uh, or I'm sorry, $5,000. And I th and I think it's a third. So whereas New York now, you know, it's much better for a spouse. So yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I cut you off, Christine. I didn't know if you were. No, and it's also the time, the timing, you know, it's, it still took him, I think, they, I think I read that it was like about three years, which seems like a long time. But when you don't have a will, it's really not. And when you have, you know, loved ones involved and the potential to fight, um, you know, three years is really not a long time when you don't have these documents in place. And, you know, we've seen estates, celebrity and not, you know, linger on for five, six, seven, eight, you know, 10 years. So they were lucky. Um, and they were also lucky in the sense that the money grew. You know, I think at that time, his estate was, you know, originally valued at like 80,000, um, which was like a couple million now, you know, that grew to 110 is what they wind up splitting. Um, but in our economy, and, you know, you never know with assets could depreciate and they don't always appreciate so they they were lucky. yeah i think yeah for me that takeaway on that was that it took a really long time for the president of the united states to have his uh estate probated which in some ways makes me feel okay that everybody's treated the same in the probate court <laughs> but unfortunately that's how everyone is treated that it takes a long time and back then i'm gonna assume that Mrs. Lincoln did not work, right? So luckily, she was in a position where Congress gave her um, a couple hundred thousand dollars, I think it was. It's like a gift um, for her husband's service and commitment to uh, the presidency. So I'm sure that held her over. But for the average um, spouse, especially back then and, and sometimes now, you know, to sit around and wait three years for your share of your inheritance, um, you know, is that could be critical. Right. And just piggybacking off of that, even if there was no spouse and there's just children left, 
and there's a house. Could you imagine having a house sit in probate in you know limbo where you can't do anything for three years? You have to pay the property taxes, the homeowners, the maintenance, the utilities, the upkeep. You know that that's huge, huge costs, huge, huge burdens. Um, you know, whereas if you had a will and you had things done the correct way, or even not having a will, avoiding probate altogether with a trust. Uh, you know, you right. wouldn't have any of these issues. Right. So just to piggyback, um, you know, th the best thing uh, Lincoln could have done was put his home and his assets into a trust uh, and then named a trustee who could have immediately distributed everything as long as he put the house and the assets into the trust. So, um, yeah. So luckily, you know, we are seeing a trend in estate planning. A lot of younger people are doing it. So, um, you know, people are starting to learn about estate planning and how beneficial it is to everybody, not just the wealthy, you know, who hear about trust fund babies and putting up, setting up trust. So, you know, hopefully you uh, are, are learning from these estate um, stories, celebrity estate stories. Uh, anything you want to add, Christina? Um, even though he was an attorney, you know, it may have been just simply because this wasn't his field. So although and, you know, any attorney could really practice any field. It's not recommended to go to an attorney who doesn't primarily focus in estate planning um, because they just don't know all the ins and outs that us estate planning attorneys know. And they may think one trust is good for you or they may tell you that you don't even need a trust. And there's so many benefits to having one. So make sure whoever you use is a reputable, good estate yeah. So really, you guys got to make sure you're, you know, when you're looking for an attorney, um, like Christina said, make sure that it, they specialize in that area because we all make mistakes, but we all learn from them. And if we're focused on one practice area, we're going to learn a lot faster than other other people in other areas. So, yeah. All right, guys. Well, if you have any questions, feel free to put them into the chat or direct message us. Otherwise, um, we'll be on next month. Hope to see everything. All right, thank, thank you so much thank for you. having me again.